Good morning! Hello, Dreaming Truth! I apologize for this soot sprite right here in my hand. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm bad at this. No, still bad at this. There we go. <laughs> Hello! Hello! If I move him on this screen, he moves somewhere else on the other screen right off the screen, and that's a pain in the butt, so... They all jumble up on this screen somehow. Welcome! I'm gonna have to fix that one of these days, and I don't know how exactly. <laughs> without having to duplicate them every time. Anyways, welcome. Um, <laughs> I'm all confused now. Why did I get all confused? Anyways, hello, welcome. Hi, Empress. Hi, Agent. Good to see you, friends. Uh, we're gonna... We're gonna hydrate, is apparently what we're gonna do. Look, it's water. Really, really, it's water. I also have coffee. And my stomach was a little upset first thing this morning, so I only had coffee, or I only had tea this morning. This is my first coffee. So, yeah, let's see how the day goes. But, hello, welcome on in. Good to see you, friends. We're gonna, we're gonna finish working on Tea is Life. Yes, I have coffee now, I will have tea at 11 Z's, because of course, that's what we always do at 11 Z's. It feels wrong to make myself coffee at 11 Z's. It really does. <laughs> can, I, can I just, like, sit over here? There we go. I'm just going to sit over here this way. Lean this way. So I'm not uh, leaning in, in this guy. I got a lot to do this weekend. Like, really, I do. I have this big old list of weird things that I got to do. And now I'm going to add fix sooty alignment. <laughs> onto there because I did not get the store updated this morning or this morning yesterday while I was doing stuff I did get the uh, soot sprite photos done I did get the sticker list updated yesterday so I mean I did get some work done um, but I have a tendency to forget how long it takes for certain things to happen and um I'm not gonna lie the Octo City was particularly difficult to edit like I happened to have like even though there were only four stickers I had to edit there were like ridiculously annoying ones to edit because of course the Octo City had so much more surface space and holes and things like that that we had to edit plus then there was um the Mr. Darcy Sooty, which because it's white, I can't just um, delete the background. I have to be a lot more careful because the because I photograph on a white background, it just washes out. And I have to do a lot more of the editing by hand because, of course, I'm not particularly good at graphic editing. I don't know the tricks to make this happen quickly and easily. So that is the way it is. Could you do this editing on stream? I probably could, but I think it would be really boring. I don't know. Like, I'm sure I could easily enough. It's just me doing it in GIMP, but... Hi, Marshmallow! Yeah, hello. I saw you sneaking in back there. I'm sorry I have your stool. Yes, I have your stool for things, but I know you can get up there without it. You are a big cat. Did you know... That my pepper plant thinks it's spring, 
it's sprouting um, a bud. Like, it's sprouting a little jalapeno plant. I'm going to have to prune back the leaves so it can actually, or, like, the um, the top branches and just let it grow from the smaller ones because it's clearly doing something right in, in my window this spring. I meant similar to what Kimmy... Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I absolutely could edit on stream. Like, it's it's totally an easy thing. I would just add that particular program as a source, and, like, I, I easily could do the work. I just think it would be boring. No, like, I'm just deleting the background of stuff. It's just... It doesn't seem like fun content to me. That's all. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I know people who do that kind of stuff on stream, but they're full-time streamers. They literally stream for, like, four to five, like, six to eight hour streams a week. So... I mean, it makes sense. They're doing all of their work online, but I don't know. That kind of just seems boring to me. <laughs> it doesn't make sense when I don't stream a ton to use some of my streaming time on, on editing City. So, I don't know. But, yeah, so I didn't get as much done because I was editing the cities, um, but they're they're ready to be redeemed and good to go, so that's the thing. It, all, it would also help if I took the time to research what, how, like, how that kind of thing would be faster. I also don't use, um, I use GIMP. I don't use, um, like, Photoshop or anything else. So it's harder to find tutorials on how to do things. They're out there. There are definitely people who've created them, but they're not as prolific as, you know, like, Photoshop tutorials and, and Procreate tutorials, so... Someday I will start doing graphic editing on stream, but I really want to wait until I get my tablet and I can start digitally drawing, right? So, I'm, I've, after the conversation we had last week, I've started back and forthing the idea of getting a proper drawing tablet better a little bit more than holding out for Procreate, um, like holding out, saving up for an iPad, because they've both got pros and cons, but... I, I could get more or less equally the same drawing capability and roughly half the price if I went with a mid-level um, Huion tablet, whereas it would be clearly, like, a lot to upgrade to, um, to go straight into um, an iPad, but... And considering I don't like Apple, there's part of me that really, really wants to, to make that switch, but... I just, I have my heart set on Procreate. It's so user-friendly. Like, I don't think, like, if I got a drawing tablet, I'd have to either invest in Photoshop, which I'm almost definitely not going to do. There, that That's way too much money for me to spend on my level of art, um, arting. And I know GIMP just isn't user-friendly enough for the kind of stuff I want to do. I mean, I think it'll get a little easier with a tablet, but it's still not the same, and you have to kind of bring your own tools to the drawing tablets. So. What? What was that? Like, you bolted down from the window into the laundry room so fast, you make me wonder what ran into the laundry room. <laughs> Marshmallow going crazy over here this morning, folks. Uh, are you going to come up and say hello? You might as well do it now while we're chatting. Yeah, we're doing the early morning chat thing, so you might as well come up now and say hello, and then I can kick you out. And Yeah. She's listening, apparently. All right, come on up. Yeah, we'll have our mellow moment with Marshmallow now, and then I can kick you out and get some work done. I don't, I mean, I hope not. I live in a really new house and, or like building that shouldn't have that kind of, um, like generic access. And I mean, like I take care of my property still really well compared to like, I don't think that there's anywhere they would really be getting into. So I don't know, but I mean, it's possible, but I keep my house clean, there's not a lot of hiding spots, and I have two cats. It's not exactly the best place for mice to hide. <laughs> yes, and there was our mallow balm. Yeah, 
Yeah. Hi. Oh, we're going to get groomed this morning, are we? Marshmallow, can you tell me about your day? I wish that this could be like an interview portion where the cat comes and asks, you know, we ask her questions. You tell me about your day, about the toys you played with and how you, you know, tried to play with Lily and she rebuffed you. Yeah. How you and Lily got to play with the catnip ball yesterday. I wish our pets could talk. Yeah? Yeah? I need to get another camera. I gotta get that other camera mounted so that I can just put like a face cam on Marshmallow when this happens. It might get an over the shoulder camera. Our cat Leroy, Je oh my god, you have a cat named Leroy Jenkins? Or had? Have or had? That is awesome, by the way. That's hilarious. Leroy Jenkins! I killed a mouse when Mr. Four was two weeks old due to hormones. I freaked. Yeah, I would have freaked out too for that one. Like. One mouse and two, like, get out of my coffee! Coffee is not for cats! She tried to drink my beer last night, too. Like, I had a beer last night. I was just laying out on the couch. And she's, like, literally licking the ring of the bottle. I'm like, seriously, cat? <laughs> like, seriously? Just Leroy, but named after Jenkins. It's still, still appropriate. Still great. Because I would call, like, if I was calling him and he wasn't coming, I'd be like, Leroy Jenkins! Like, that would be my... That's how I would call him. I would just do it all the time, and you get him used to it, and it would be perfect. I'm gonna name a cat Leroy someday. I do have naming rights on the next cat. Because uh, Hunter and Little Hunter have both named our cats. It's my turn next. I had the right to name the dog when we got the dog, but then we didn't keep the dog. And I did name the dog, but the dog didn't even keep that name because he went to a new owner and has an entirely different name. So, <laughs> so maybe... <laughs> Yeah, Little Hunter had picked your name before she even saw you. And she already had her name, her heart set on naming you Marshmallow. So you're a little toasted Marshmallow. Right? I actually have Instagram accounts for both of the cats. Not that I actually update them much anymore, and I did at the beginning. And I never wanted to do anything with them. It was always just a fun way to chronicle the cats' lives. And I just keep forgetting to do it because my phone is a pain in the ass to switch between accounts. Um, so both Mo Marshmallow and Liliana have, have Instagram accounts. So Marshmallow is, is um, um, Toasted Marshmallow Fluff. Because, like, Toasted Marshmallow and Marshmallow and Marshmallow Fluff are all gone. So she's Toasted Marshmallow Fluff. <laughs> um on Instagram. And Lily is Liliana the Black. Right? Mwah. Hubs has naming rights on the next one, and it will be Joe the Cat. Joe the Cat. <laughs> is that from something, or does he just love, like, the audacity of it just being so boring? Yeah? I'm going to have to go soon. I'm putting on my finger cut so we can start getting some work done. Boops. <laughs> Sharp head or kitty feet. Achievement Hunter, the old YouTube channel. <laughs> Okay. I've never really heard of that one, but I also don't really do much on YouTube ever, so that makes sense. That I, I would not really know about it. Mm 
What's up, Marshmallow? Okay, are you gonna sit there? Can I work? Oh my gosh, that's that's a lot of joys in the chat. What's even funnier is joys in my reward queue because it comes up all of the text of what the emote is, and it's hilarious. <laughs> Um, oh, let us see. What is my daily joy? My daily joy today, I would say, joy is in the chat, everyone. My daily joy today, I would say, is the fact that my back is starting to hurt a little less because I have been actively doing yoga pretty much every day for the last, like, week and a half. So that's my daily joy is that I'm finally starting to feel a little less back pain. I wasn't in pain by the end of my shift this morning at work. Please, please feel free to share your daily joys, my friends. Also, coffee is always, always a small joy. What's up? What's up? Are we going to work? Yeah, we're going to work. I'm going to have to move you, aren't I? I will let you sit there for a while and we'll see what happens. If you behave, you can stay. Okay? So I think I decided what I want to do with... Um, had my doctor's appointment going on some Belta for anxiety, depression, and pain and have a potential cause for the dizziness and tinnitus I've been experiencing and an appointment to find out more and a sleep study referral. That sounds excellent. Getting your health in motion is a really good feeling, and I've been going through a similar journey in that one myself lately, and, like, really, it, it, it is an amazing feeling to finally feel like you're making some progress, even if you're nowhere near a resolution, feeling like you can actually see a pass is a path is amazing. I love it. Glad to be Friday. Need a weekend away from the dang phones. Agreed. Agreed. Sometimes simple joys are as simple as my week is done and that is beautiful. And no cavities at the dentist. Also very good. I don't I don't think I would have that uh, that same. Right? Oh, you know what else my daily joy is? And what are you doing to fill your cup? That is an excellent question. Um yesterday I actually got my computer to work so that I can flip audio back and forth, like headphones back and forth, without it screwing up all of the audio. Agent will remember this from, like, months and months and months ago. Every time I would try to switch audio to headsets, it would screw up all of the rest of my audio settings everywhere on my computer. And I wouldn't, and I just could not use wireless headphones while I was streaming. I got it working yesterday. There's some setting in Chrome that was being dumb, that it was overriding like the system's audio, and I found it and I changed it and I can now just swap back and forth between Bluetooth headphones once I pair them and it's great. So now if I want to have a gaming stream or something like that, I, I can do it. It's not going to be a big deal with having conflicting audio and stuff like that. Why is my camera at this really, really weird setting? Like, this weird angle. No, that's the other way. Is that worse? Okay. The camera's in front of my face now more, but let's try to fix that. There we go. That's a little better. I hate dumb override settings. Yeah, like, it, it's not like it's intended to be an override setting. It's just that Chrome is kind of dumb and system pervasive. And it's just the nature of the way it's designed to work. Like, being so, um, it's designed to be so portable between devices where everything is retained in it that sometimes those settings leak out into weird, stupid places that aren't always predictable. And I both love and hate that about Chrome. Like, it is so system-draining, but it's 
worth it because I go back and forth between devices all the time. So, it's unfortunate, but it also helps me a whole lot. Although I do go back and forth a lot less now, because I used to jump back and forth between the upstairs computer and down here all the time. And so, like, I wanted to have, like, my browser settings between them, but I almost never use the computer upstairs anymore. Um, because I've been trying to detach myself from using computers, unless it's, um, I'm in the studio for really, so... I'm just trying to detach myself from screens. I've been doing a lot of puzzles. It's been wonderful. And I have like a renewed love of doing puzzles now that I've got, um, uh, now that I've got a p actual use for all my puzzles. Because I'm going to start mounting them on, um, like cardboard or like, um, the foam core board so that I can uh, kind of use them as like sound panels going up the stairs because the sound is really, really um, echoey going up our stairs and it's almost like gunshot sound right into Hunter's bedroom. Um, so like if he goes to nap or whatever, if he's sleeping in in the morning, like he can't because it get like the net noises like echo up the stairs so loudly. So. We've been trying to come up with an inexpensive way to, like, sound panel up that wall so it's better, and I suddenly decided that I, uh, I thought that it might be a really great idea to try to do it with, um, puzzles, because I love doing puzzles, and now I'm even more enthusiastic about doing puzzles now that I've got some place to put those puzzles instead of just taking them apart when I'm done, right? So I'm thinking I might do the raindrops on these a little differently. What I'm thinking I might do is, instead of using colored clay, I thought I might tint translucent clay and then kind of do that agate look that we've done before um, and just see how that works. And if I do that for like each color, I think Marshmallow farted, it stinks in here. Why does this not want to... What I really should do is I should probably get out the clay press because that will help me um, uh, mix the clay colors better. Yes, I did. Yes, I did say that. So I'm actually really excited. I'm going to see if I can find some time um, this weekend or next week to play with some of the new settings. Twitch is actually too many things. Mellow's farts are not mellow. That's true. Right. Um, going into work, work. Sure, no problem. Um, oh, what was I saying? I was saying something. It'll come to me in a minute. Enjoy your work, look, friend. I was saying something, and then I got sidetracked by my cat's butt, because it's gross, and I'm sorry. Twitch is allowing, right? <laughs> uh, oh, right, thank you. Twitch is finally starting to add in um, additional features into where, like, you can do all the redeem pop-ups and stuff like that um, on, like, directly through Twitch, and you're not needing like third party systems for that. So I might play around with that this weekend and see how well it works. Cause if I can reduce how much I need to use trigger fire, it'll keeps trigger fire open for, um, <laughs> what for totally forgetting what I was saying. <laughs> um, so I'm hoping like if I can take out a, like makeup space in, in trigger fire 
I can use it more for like the soundboard commands because I won't need them as much and so I can kind of separate and organize a little bit better with how features are used. Um, and it'll give me more space to have more fun with um, larger files and stuff like that because Triggerfire only lets you have um, so much space. And I haven't come close to hitting my space in Triggerfire yet, but I mean, I'll be able to have more fun with it. And if I want to upload something that's a little bit bigger in file size, I'll be able to do that. So, all right. There's like blue ink on my play press that I'm gonna need to clean up. I don't even know how that got on there. Because my clay is falling down there and so I'm getting like blue Ooh. all over my clay. Well, yes, it's out of frame. You can't see the clay press. The clay is in frame, at least. <laughs> I just noticed your sooty count on the only face cam layout is way less than... I think it's... Yeah, it has to do with the homework. Yeah, it's probably because some of them, as I've moved them, they've moved off screen on the other one. But yes, um, I have to redo the city layout. And I'm not entirely sure how to fix it so it doesn't become a problem in the future. I don't I don't really know. So I think there must be a little bit of um of a lag right now. Yeah, there's a little bit of lag. Not a ton. That's okay. I'm sure it'll come back. Um, yeah. It just means I have to start paying more attention to what I actually said. So I'm not going, oh, what the heck are they talking about when someone responds to me in chat? Yeah, I just, brain. Come on, brain, we gotta be good. <laughs> We're in trouble if I'm relying on my brain to be good. Aren't you supposed to be work lurking? The brain. Good call. Because we can have fun with that. We could have, like, do that a couple of different ways. We could do it like it's a zombie city eating a brain. Or it's like a scientist with a brain, or it's just a sooty with its brain showing, or maybe it's carrying a little brain, <laughs> which is kind of weird and creepy. <laughs> Speaking of sooty stickers, you guys got to see about 
my sticker collection is growing. Number three was your thought? Um, with his brain showing. Okay, I had to think a second. Which one did I say third? So, I've been slowly collecting stickers. I found a really great sticker company that, um, like, periodically, um, they do, like, really good deals on different kinds of stickers. So whenever one of their really good deals comes on, I order a bunch so I can have inexpensive stickers that I can use for putting in with orders. So I have these ones and these ones. Okay, actual work alert meeting started with Gorb, which I should have done this one as a die cut Gorb, but it had a die cut sticker, but they happen to be available as circle stickers at that particular promotion. Um, but I might remake those as, as die cut stickers eventually. But this, this is what I just recently had made. And Little Hunter is so excited about them. They were glitter, sooty, and a t shirt so stickers. <laughs> Little Hunter loves this soot sprite so much um, and this idea of the sooty and a t shirt that they're playing um, a game called Chicory where you actually, you essentially get to color in your whole, the whole world. Um, and so you get to design the shirt you're wearing and they de designed it like this green with the soot sprite on it. Like it's just bloody adorable. So I, I made these stickers. So these are things that are gonna go in order. Um, if I get a bigger collection of stickers, I might start putting them up for sale. Um, in the Kofi store as well, but I haven't really decided exactly what I'm going to do with that for sure, but. So yeah, we have super cute stickers coming now. <laughs> Slowly getting more. The, the company is a sticker mule if anybody is interested, so. I'm really liking them. They do uh, samples. Um, that you can order for a relatively inexpensive price or you can order like usually like 10 of a sticker or something like that which is what I started doing because I could spend like 10 bucks on like um, a sample pack of stickers and have enough that I could you know include them with a few orders and things like that and I did that for like two orders in a row until um, that deal came up where I could get a whole bunch at a really good discount um, and then, uh, where was I going with this? I forgot where I was going with this. Oh well. <laughs> All right. All right, so our clay is finally getting conditioned and workable. experience with translucent clay as well that the better you condition it um, the better the translucency look looks like if it's not totally translucent I find that it's a just a little bit more cloudy than it would have been otherwise I mean it's translucent clay it's never gonna be totally transparent but um, I feel like I find that when it's well conditioned it's a little bit better Also depends on the clay you use. This is just super sculpy translucent clay. It is not the clearest of translucent clays either, compared to some of the other ones. I think Cernet is probably the one that has the best rating for translucency. Or at least it was some years ago when I was researching that. Lots changed in clay since then. Pretty good. So now 
I'm going to mix our colors in. So I'm going to start, I should not start with red. We've all experienced, know from experience that red is like the worst color to start in and it makes the biggest mess. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do backwards for this part of the rainbow. I'm going to do yellow, orange, then red. Um, and then I'll do a thorough cleanup and then I'll do the green, blue, purple sections. Um, of clay and I don't really need a lot because I, I only need like six pieces out of this you know so I'll probably make up like this much of, of each color and then go from there so all right so I'm gonna need to put on some gloves which is gonna be a little weird because I've got the finger cots on I've never put gloves on over my finger cots but I don't want to wear the gloves the whole time so I'll take them off and on. Alright. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a little bit of the alcohol ink to tint them. Um, you really don't need a lot. It's a uh, it's a pretty quality ink, so I don't need a lot of it to get the pigmentation level that I want. Um, if you're using a fairly inexpensive, like watery ink, you probably would need a little bit more. But that will also then be adding moisture into your clay and might change the consistency a little bit more than using um, a quality, highly pigmented. I like using a little eyedropper to put the pigmentation in because um, it cleans up easily. Um, I find it's a little bit easier than using like a brush to apply the ink. So the thing about this kind of thing is it is going to be messy. Like your ink is going to get all over the place while you're first um, mixing it together. Um, You can put it right into the clay press with this on it, but I'm going to try not to just so I don't get as much ink into the clay press itself. So the ink itself is now more or less dried into this clay, like it's absorbed in. So at this point now, I can put it through the clay press and it's gonna not going to transfer to the rollers of the press as much as if I'd done it when I first started. So I'm just going to give it slightly more work and then I'm going to start putting it through the, the press to do the rest of the um, blending of the clay. For this particular piece that I'm doing, if my clay color isn't totally blended in, like this clay ink here isn't as blended as it is the other places, that's going to be okay. I mean, I am going to try and blend it a little bit more thoroughly, but if that happens, it's okay because I'm trying to do, I'm not trying to do like a really uniform look. I'm actually going to add some additives into this so that if it's a little less, it's still interesting. Um, so I'm going to add in some like solid flex and I'm going to add in a little bit of gold paint. Um, 
So I think for the solid flex, I'm gonna add just the tiniest bit of orange to it. Right, I've got this interesting orange color. It's like a pastel orange. I'm gonna add the tiniest little bits of that in. And then, I really, really wish I had some of those chrome paints. That's really the color I would like to add, but. So I'm gonna have to use the same tint throughout all of them to like have it have a consistency. How, how thick is this gold paint? I really need to invest in um, new metallic paints. They're pretty old and a little gungy, so. All right, I think that's still pretty workable. Some of the other colors are not as workable in this set that I have of paints. So, the silver is pretty much totally dried out at this point. do that marbling look. Do I want to do that marbling look with the gold? Let's try the marbling look with the gold. Let's try it. Let's see how it works out. Worst case scenario, it looks bad and we don't ever do it again. So I'm going to need some blades. I want to be as small as I can get them. So I haven't conditioned this orange clay really at all because if I condition it, it'll stick together a lot. Um, whereas if you're cutting it up when it hasn't been conditioned a lot, um, it it's drier and it won't stick to itself as much and you can get a little bit of a smaller, um, smaller piece variation this way. That'll behave a little bit more like you want it to. your solid color, your main color, a little bit chunkier. So you're going to have variation in size and texture. And then so we mix the two together, kind of evenly, roughly evenly distribute the two so that there's not really significant lumps of the little stuff in between. It spread the little stuff out as much as you can. And then, then we put our gloves back on, because this is where it's going to get messy again. I did not pay enough attention when I took these gloves off, so they're kind of being a pain in the butt to get them back on. <laughs> Okay, short break between calls. Well, hello, agent. We are about to add 
gold paint to our yellow here to, um, do you have a city with a bow and arrow cupid? So I don't think we do. Um, I have a crossbow. I did make one with a crossbow. Um, but it has broken already. Well, Hunter got too close to the board and broke it. But I did get the photos of it first. So there is technically one with a crossbow, but not with, like, a Cupid-style bow and arrow. try and be sparing with this because I'm not sure how how good the how long this gold paint is gonna last through this project so I guess we'll see So it's still going to be a little bit messy as I work with it, but I need to take these gloves off because it's I'm not going to be able to get the dexterity I need to really be able to sculpt this into re drops at this rate, but... Actually, I'm going to go wash these gloves. Hello, look! Um, I'm going to go wash my hands with the gloves on uh, so I can try and clean some of this off and continue to use these gloves because I don't want to go through a bajillion de gloves today. Fuck off, Locke. Fuck off. There we go. Cleaner gloves. Not totally clean, but cleaner. <laughs> you almost forgot. Well, you have recently suffered a hit to the head, so, I mean... Can't be totally surprised that there was uh, <laughs> some forgetfulness. Excuse me. surface is mostly clean. Good stuff. Okay. Good. Alright, so now we're gonna start making little raindrops like these sample ones that we had made. And we're gonna make them out of our clay. I'm just going to kind of mix it in on itself so that the 
gold layer on the outside isn't strictly all over it. And it'll be embedded in it still. My nose is starting to get itchy from when Marshmallow was here again. I think these might, these were a little bit bigger than these ones had been, but I still like the size of them. I think that they'll still work. Um, and I, th with having the new accenting in them, I, they need to be slightly bigger just so that there's more space for that to stand out a little. Alright, and heads up, we will have 11 Z's in about 5 minutes. I was trying to get them to be mostly the same shape and size. Maybe you should get some tools involved. That might help a little. pretty good. Alright, that's two down. 
get one more started before Eleven Z's cat kicks in. Still needs a little less clay in this one. That's about good. There we go, that's three. And I'm gonna run for 11sies. We'll be back in three or four minutes. Take your breads, have a stretch, take care of yourselves, friends. Look away for your screens for a minute, because we all need that. And we'll be right back very soon.
All right, we are back, friends. Okay, and we're gonna make some more little raindrops. I'm just gonna wanna twist this a little bit. Like, it's got a good amount of the detailing in it. It's just kind of very boring in a lump. So I'm just gonna give me a bit some interest. I'm just gonna move these out of the way. Don't want to move them too far because I kind of want to keep them as reference size and shape. Does Kiki have plans for the weekend? Not nothing really serious. Um, mostly just laundry and hanging out with little Hunter. Like nothing, no big plans. No, not this weekend. Next weekend. Next weekend is. Little Hunter's birthday party. Um, Little Hunter's birthday is in the middle of December. It's like smack dab in the middle between Christmas and New Year's. So getting anybody to come out for a birthday party at their birthday is pretty much impossible. Um, so we always do their birthday later in the year, their birthday party. We usually are able to get it in January. We usually do it mid-January. But just the way things came together this year, we didn't get it everything set up in time, so it's next weekend. <laughs> um, and they're having laser tag with uh, a bunch of friends, and it's going to be a good time. So next weekend, I have some big plans. And then the weekend after that is a long weekend and my birthday. I think that's the weekend after that, right? My, my mathing this correctly, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, next weekend is the birthday party, and then the following weekend is a long weekend with the Monday thereafter being a holiday for us in Canada, and when we will celebrate my birthday, uh, I'm still working on ideas for it. Um, I'm seriously, I'm going to make, like, redeems that, uh, here we call it family day. Pretty much it was, um... February needed a stat holiday, so they just kind of makeshifted one for us. Um, it's pretty much what it works out to be. Um, so it's it's nothing, it's, yeah, it's just uh, an extra long weekend. It's a stat holiday. It often falls on the same day as President's Day. But it also means my birthday usually falls off, uh, falls on a stat holiday, which is just lovely, right? <laughs> Everybody loves it when their birthday falls on a stat holiday. We get that Monday off for President's Day in the U.S. Yeah, exactly. So there will be birthday shenanigans that day.
Well, I hope both and two birthday weekends are super fun for you, but I hope so too. I think they'll be okay. There's we've got a good turnout for little Hunter's birthday. Um, last year we didn't really have a very big turnout. Um, I don't know if it was just the weekend we had it held or what they had planned, what they had decided to do. I don't know. Um, but there was not a big turnout last year, but like pretty much everybody RSVP'd this year that little Hunter invited. So, um, including, um, people we really did not think were coming because they have pretty much snubbed our family. But Little Hunter insisted on inviting them, so we did. We just expected them to not come, but they're coming, so. They're having, they're, yeah, we're doing laser tag for their birthday. So it's going to be a pretty wild, uh, wild weekend next weekend. <laughs> a little smaller. May all the people bring lots of joys to Little Hunter's birthday gathering. Oh, you're so sweet. I think it's going to be good. I need to work on the shape of this one a little bit. It's also a little bit too big, I think. You too, too big. You got any big plans? Nothing exciting here, lurking and modding and streaming and chores and stuff. Yep. <laughs> Sounds pretty accurate. Now, last weekend was our, our busy weekend where we were, Little Hunter and I were out having a shopping adventure, and then we went to dinner at my parents' house. Now, this weekend is our weekend of, dear God, please let us do nothing for a day <laughs> before we have two more busy weekends in a row. <laughs> Although I don't think we really have a lot planned for my actual birthday weekend. Because um, so far as I know, Hunter's not doing board games. Usually on family day... He does like a big board game party, but I haven't heard a word about it this year, so I guess he's probably not planning on doing it this year. Which, not gonna lie, makes me happy because he always steals my birthday <laughs> for his board game party. <laughs> Uh, 
All right, six little yellow raindrops. All right, so let's take this yellow out of the way. Also, here's knowing that I need like half of the clay that I thought I needed. <laughs> you out of the way. Um, who do I want to move you out of the way to? Um, do I have... Well, that'll have to do. I don't have a lot of empty storage drawers right now, but... out of the way and then it'll be time to start tinting a second one all right so now we'll work on the orange so I think the orange should probably have like red flecks in it um, it just seems to make sense I'm not sure what I'm gonna do for the red Maybe black flecks no I think that'd be too much anyways um so I need just a tiny bit of a nice red to make the little fleckies out of. But no, you're not coming up right now. No, I'm sorry. We're not. I love you backwards and forwards to the end of the earth cat, but you are not coming up on this desk right now. Ooh, night button. Finally landed, but there have not been a lot of lands today, have there? There have not. Oh no. Knocking more things over. I have the zoomies. It this vibrant of a red. I don't think I want it this vibrant of a red. It might be like the red that I use for like the red red. I don't think that's too red for what I want. I need more of an orangey red. There we go. I like this. It's a really, it's like a very burnt orange. It's actually deeper, um, deeper red than you can see. My camera does not pick up the, the red tone as much on this one. So I need some of the translucent and I'm going to get out some of the orange ink. I'm going to put my gloves back on too, of course. I'm going to do a smaller piece. Um, so I probably have to be a little bit more careful to use a smaller amount of ink. so little now I don't need to 
really use the dropper or anything like that to get much on here. So. My nose is so itchy. It's driving me crazy. But then again, what else is new? My nose is always itchy and driving me crazy. actually need the tiniest bit more orange color in here. Gonna need a little bit more orange because the yellow is looking more almost as orange as this orange does and I, I want this to be a little deeper. Maybe I should have gone with the dropper, but I yeah, live and learn. That's better. Alright, so that's pretty orange, and now we're going to mix in the little bit of the orange and red here. Oh, I actually kind of got this up. don't need as much in this one because there's just less clay in general so let's spread that up with some All right, now let's get the gold in. All right, I need just a minute.
All right, sorry about that. Alrighty. bits are sticking to my gloves and not to each other. Oh, darn word. Phone rings at the worst time, and I'm already back up in you. Oh, that sucks. Busy days suck. Alright. I'm gonna go wash these gloves again, so I can continue to use them as I work. I'll be right back. Those will last me at least one more of these so I can kind of do like the red ones. And then I'll switch up the gloves for when I move over to the cool side of the rainbow. So I've got a reference one. I'm going to start making the orange ones. Actually, I'm going to make these over here. Still going to have a reference. I'm just going to set this tile out of the way. Why is my itchy nose back? Oh my god. Drives me crazy. And it's like, it's not even particularly dry in here. My studio is actually the most humid room, like, in the entire house, because the sump pump is in my closet. <laughs> so I don't know why I'm so itchy all the time. I mean, besides marshmallow. I could be allergic to myself. I don't know. It's funny because there are certain things that actually, maybe it's actually the humidity that makes my nose itch. Because I do find that my nose is always itchy when I'm 
doing the dishes. Somehow my nose always gets itchy when I'm doing the dishes. So maybe too much humidity actually makes my nose itchy. And that's why it does it the most when I'm in the studio. Because it is the most humid room in the house. All right. trying to blend the orange a little bit better throughout the piece which does actually kind of make the gold blend a little bit better like a little more and I wouldn't say better because I kind of want the gold to be separate but it is what it is friend yeah we got some raindrops and some rain clouds sculpting uh, making these guys is taking me a little bit longer than I had anticipated because I'm blending I'm hand blending all of the colors of the clay in a translucent with um, ink so but they're coming along nicely and I think that they're gonna have a really nice neat unique look to them and that they'll be fun. Otherwise, we're just having a nice, chill Friday stream. I like the clouds, the little clouds. Oh, those are cute. Cloud love. Also, my nose has been annoyingly itchy today. This needs to be still slightly smaller. Seems good. The colors are very similar. I'm hoping once they bake up that the orange ones are more orange. I think they'll be okay. Cause they'll be they'll have the translucency I think will change the color tone a little bit. Needs a teeny tiny bit less clay. There we go. And hopefully that's right.
They look a little like jelly beans. That's what they remind me of. They've got like the translucent translucency of like jelly beans right now. Alright, I need another second. I am so sorry. All right, let's see if putting cream on my nose helps it itch less. And then maybe we can just forget this whole thing ever happened. All right. All right, two of six done. Actually, why am I doing six? I only need three. probably do a couple more than the three because now that I think about it I don't need one per rate for thing I'd like because each one of these is a pair and each one is gonna have half of them so I don't need six I only need three I'm not gonna undo these right now because I mean I can kind of select which one looks best after they're baked I guess but I don't need to do a full six now that I think about it See how bad Kiki is at math. like that one. I didn't have as much gold that got s switched off kind of like there.
I'll do like one more just to make sure I've got good ones to select from. I like this. Okay, so we're going to set these aside now. And we're going to work on red. It's going to be messy because red is perpetually messy. <laughs> All right. Let's have a massacre, folks. We've already got some clay cut up. I'm going to try and make it a little smaller, both colors. I think I'm going to use a little bit of both of these colors in it because why not? I got them here. still had a little bit of the translucent clay that was I did okay good condition I thought so Kiki going to get bloody looking finger cuts oh no stories we can make up tee hee please make up stories please make clips please have fun and shenanigans that is very much what I want I'm actually trying to come up with a fun idea of some sort of reward for making clips so that we can just have more clips to have shenanigans with. I don't know. But I haven't really figured it out yet. All right. What red are we using? Am I using red red or am I going to use one of the more crimson? I'm going to use the crimson red, I think. I think the others are going to come out a little bit more pink. You know, I think even the crimson is going to come out pink. I'm going to use the red red. It's still going to come out pink, but I think it'll come out less pink than some of the others will.
should be enough. I mean, you do need a lot of pigment with red to get it to look red because it does look pink, which is probably why um, reds are always such a high transfer kind of thing. It's because there's so much pigment in it to get it to look red and not pink. <coughs> All right. Let's put these gloves back on. I feel like there's a piece of fuzz in the back of my throat right now. <coughs> oh my god, can my face stop being irritated this stream? <coughs> the itching and the coughing and the... Oh my gosh, just stop. Stop. I'm saying it to the tissue like it's the tissue's fault when really it's my face's fault. I should put a little bit more red in this. Can you rage quit your face? Because it's kind of what I want to do right now. Is like rage quit my face. Alright, I think that should be intense enough once the... <clears throat> once everything settles in. Alright.
That's probably good enough. <clears throat> and then I can actually I need to break this up some more because I didn't put the gold paint in. Aha! Also, heads up, we have an ad roll coming. <clears throat> Just about three minutes. Just be aware. An ad roll. 
Yes, it's a bread roll. Okay, hold on one second, friends. Seriously, I'm gonna rage quit my face. Gonna rage quit my face. Okay. It sounds like the next hit single from Kiki and the Hunters. <clears throat> Rage quit my face. Let's get my <coughs> reference drop back. <coughs> A little big. The accent reds aren't coming through right now. Hopefully they come through a little bit more once I once they're actually baked. But the, a lot of the gold is coming through and I like that. So it's a trade-off, I suppose. This is a very good band name for us as well, I must say. <clears throat> Alright, this one you can see the red, um, the solid reds in it a little better, and I like that a lot. I really like the the colors of red in this. <clears throat> it 
because you can definitely see like the three different tones and the gold because you can see the, the red red the maroony red and then the red in the background and the gold and it looks really sharp I like it a lot just kind of breaking it up to see if I can find chunks of the red that I can make sure to incorporate so I don't end up with as many like this one where there's very little of the red the solid colors very interesting scream, scheme, scheme for the reds. I like it. I really wanted to have something more like this for all of them. Like, you can see it in the oranges pretty nicely, but the orange isn't as an intense color as I'd, well, as red is in general, but... Those are pretty good. I might make one more just because I've made like five of the others, but and we'll have an another backup, hopefully of one that has solid red in it. All right, that's pretty good. All right, I like those. I can put this away. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the cool colors. All right, I'm gonna change up my finger cots and I'm gonna change my gloves as we straight up move to new color schemes. So this is the blue, the purple, and the green that we're gonna do. And I need to clean the clay press a little bit because it did get a little dirty itself with um, ink while I was mixing colors. So. gets everywhere.
time. See, even after it was already cleaned once, it still transfers red. I finally got it mostly clean there. All right, good stuff. Do I hear an ex pooper? Wait, what? I'm confused. I know we were joking about poopers the other day, and I don't remember the context because I have the world's worst brain. The cranking sound? I still don't remember. I still don't remember the pooper reference. The oh yes, the pooper, the extruder. Ah. Oh, and someday I will have a brain that you know works. Unlurk. Boom. All you missed was a whole lot of me pausing to scratch my nose over and over again throughout the stream. Alright. That coworker is going to be the re- Oh no. Oh no, now what did he do? All right, uh, we're gonna start with green. I need some more translucent clay. I'm gonna have to condition more up. So while you're typing, I'm gonna tell my story of my mansplaining coworker. I have like one coworker that I work with every day, like at my corner. He's my crossing partner. We're always together. And we genuinely get along. We go and we choose to go and do, um, like, other events and things like that. And we volunteer to work together. Because we generally, genuinely get along and like each other. But sometimes this guy, he's like, you know, you're pretty typical. He's in his mid to late 50s um, white guy. And he's just the kind of person who feels the need to be involved in everything. Um, and I'm pretty sure he just kind of thinks he knows everything. Um, he's a nice enough guy. It's not like he's r mean about it. Like, he's genuinely a nice guy and he just wants to help everybody. But he's definitely got old white guy privilege where he thinks everything he does is perfect. <laughs> so yesterday, not yesterday, maybe a couple days ago, we were... Um, walking back from our morning shift, um, and, like, I live within walking distance, and he parks up the street, um, at the local, um, grocery store, so that way he doesn't have to park in the school parking lot and take up a school parking spot and, and get a little exercise himself that way. So we'll, like, walk, he'll, like, more or less walk me most of the way home, um, at the end of our morning shifts. And, um, so there was a disabled car in the middle of the road the other day, and there was a cop car behind it. So clearly the car had become disabled in the middle of the road, and, um, and there was an officer there who was dealing with the situation, right? When you see an officer... Generally, most people go, cool, it's covered, and ignore it. You go about your day. It's under control. The officer is clearly working on it. Move on. No, 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 no. My coworker walks out into the middle of the road in his crossing gear. He's like, hey, can, why don't we just push it out of the way? And a cop looks at him and goes... Everything, like, the whole car is disabled, the computer's locked down, everything's locked, the wheels are locked, we can't push it. And it's like, do you not think the police officer would have thought of that? How 
healthy, strong guy could have done it himself <laughs> with the help of the owner of the vehicle, right? Like, and it's just like, you don't need to be involved in everything, Steve. Trust that the people are doing their own jobs. You don't need to be like, oh, he needs me to do his job. He does not need you to do his job. Go about your day. Please. <laughs> He's a nice guy. I genuine. Oh, no. Okay. Sorry. Um, he's a genuinely nice guy, and we get along. He's just got a little white old man privilege showing, and sometimes it makes me mad. Okay, sorry. So now, now that I've had my rant, we're going to hear Empress's rant about their killer. Um, we were tasked to research a specific, a specific subsection of a topic, and he's looking at the whole wide section and is going straight to solutioning instead of just doing what he's asked. He's like a puppy. He's constantly looking to please and serve over and over serve. But I'm a big, strong member of the community. I must help and be someone's knight and shining armor. Yeah, it's definitely. And it's not, and it's, it's totally coming from, like, an altruistic perspective, but it's still, like, with that white man confidence of everyone actually needs me when, in fact, nobody does kind of mentality that is my partner's fault. <laughs> um, he's, like, on the local, um, like, emergency preparedness volunteer committee for the region, and, like, it's just... That's the kind of guy he is. He likes helping, he likes being involved, but he doesn't realize that he does not need to be. <laughs> In all things, right? It's like, yeah, exactly, right? Like, and I'm trying to tell him, like, Steve, there's an officer there. Let him do his job. He doesn't need you. <laughs> I feel bad. But it is what it is. Oh dear. Twitch is being twitchy for poor Brenda. <laughs> it is not behaving as she tries to have her guests join her. Um, I mean, if the officer needed him, I would have called out, hey, hey, you, I need some assistance. The cops have radios for a reason. Exactly, right? Like, all he was doing at that point was sitting in the road and waiting for it. But I mean, like, most male police officers are in fairly good health and condition around here. They're not always super great. But anybody who's on patrol is usually a fairly young officer who has the capability of pushing a car out of the road if need be, right? Especially if they have the help of the owner of the vehicle. Like, he did not need you. <laughs> he did not need you, man. Where is the arm to my... Okay. Brain. And, and that's exactly it. The officer, if the officer needs you, he's going to ask for you. But he's not. He's not going to involve civilians. You're a crossing guard. You are a, still more or less a civilian just because you were employed by the city. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. I am an advocate of a cab. But I also believe that cops do have a place... And, um, yes, restart, I know, right? They are, yeah, yeah, I was saying that a minute ago. Full thing. Um, and it's, but at the same time, when they are doing a job like that, that's the kind of thing they should be doing. They're perfectly prepared for it. Oh. Riddle me this. I don't eat until 2 p.m. yesterday. Today I cannot stop munching. No substances involved. It's true. I find, I do find that sometimes if I don't eat enough one day, the next day I will be in grazing mode. It's like my body is trying to make up for it. Yeah, what a land. 
the less night rig the finally not as rigged nightbot. I know, right? Holy shirt balls. Also, I love that you said shirt balls. I definitely need more good place redeems. <sighs> Holy forking shirt balls. We're getting Wi-Fi <laughs> Wi-Fi prayers. <laughs> this is like the worst. I feel real bad for Brenda right now because there's nothing more embarrassing than tech issues when you have a special guest. It's like I swear I'm good at this. And then everything breaks. All right, so now let's see. Let's get out uh, some gloves. Get a new player gloves out. So we're going to start with the green, I think, and I'm going to use, so this is a grass green, I think I'm just going to use the green green, it's got a little bit of a bluer tint to it, but I think I probably want that because I want it to be a little bit more pastel-y, oh, I do I want this, I don't know, oh, you know what? I think the gold will go better with that green. Warm fuzzy for Kiki, aren't you sweet? Thank you so much. Wait, who is this? From Empress. Okay, it took me a second to find that. Oh my gosh, I'm... From my dove chocolate, your vibe attracts your tribe. Aw, that Kiki has a good vibe. I love you guys, that is so sweet. Thank you for making me feel seen as I try to make sure everyone else feels seen. <laughs> I appreciate you. I really do. I appreciate you all. I would appreciate no, also knowing where my handle is. It's right where I put it. It is right where I put it. Libby W. California. Somebody has the last name California. That seems like particularly weird and probably intentionally chosen. Possibly not their actual legal nickname, uh, their legal name. Like my sister whose last name is awesome, that is totally not her legal last name. Or well, it is her legal last name. She legally changed her name. It's not her given name at all. <laughs>
going to blend up some green. Let's see if we got enough ink in this on the first try. I think we might need a little bit more still. Not a ton, but a little bit more ink. And I think that like the flex on this one will be more of like a huntry green, like a deeper huntry green, just to have the nice contrast. Funky green. No, we don't. I don't think the funky green looks quite right. All right. Um, where is my deeper, darker greens? I don't think I actually have like a hunter green right now. I have like a khaki green, but it's a little too um, khaki green. Like it's not the true hunter green that I want. All right. I'm going to have to go with, no, that is too much of the same tone, you think? Maybe I can find a teeny tiny bit here. This is close. That's probably going to have to do it. But since it's a small piece, it might work. Yeah, because that's a little lighter than this one. Okay, we're going to go with that. Gold star to my pharmacy. They started putting the cost of the med in the pickup notification so I can prepare if I want insurance to, or to go with good. Oh, cool. Good for them. I love when they're really into what their patients need and are, are, are prepared for that. My pharmacy is pretty good that way, but it's um, mostly because they um, our, fresh, our pharmacy is in Freshco where Hunter used to work. <laughs> So they, for a very long time, treated us very well because Hunter worked there or had recently worked there. But it's now been a couple of years and I'm not even sure that same pharmacist is there anymore. So it's not, we also don't get a lot of um, um, prescriptions anymore. We had to get them fairly regularly for quite some time because little Hunter had a sinus thing um, or near nose and throat, like they were having uh, problems with their ears. And we were going to the ear, nose and throat doctor. Um, I was regularly getting a prescription and I can't remember what it was. Oh, oh well. <laughs> Clearly not that important. I greatly appreciate any business that really puts the customer and their needs as part of their business model.
sneaks in from work, clerk. I see Kiki making guacamole. Yeah, it does look a little like guacamole, doesn't it? Well, I told my mom about my recent anxiety attack, and she sent me this. How are you doing today? I love you with all my heart. I think that's sweet, but maybe I'm missing something. Well, I appreciate you carrying it so smushy. Oh, you can. You're not like a real smushy person like that. It could be worse. You could be trying to fix your problem. <laughs> All right. That seems good. Let's get the gold out. Uh, my mom and I have a streamer. Fair enough. I I understand. I don't have a strained relationship. I have a somewhat strained relationship with my dad, but it's mostly because my relationship with my stepmother is getting more and more strained every day. <laughs> um, and my, my sister is completely estranged from my dad, so I get it. She cares more about how my anxiety reflects on her parenting than how it affects me. That, that is unfortunate. And, I mean, to be honest, it probably does have <laughs> a, a root in that. Feels very Emerald City. We're off to see the wizard. <laughs> green and gold. I, I really love the combination of green and gold, though, myself. Um, green and gold were actually our wedding colors. It was um, Legend of Zelda based that we made the decision for green and gold because we did have a video game themed wedding. Like, subtly video game themed wedding. So, I'm going to go wash up these gloves, because again, I am going to try and use them through the next color, because I'll probably get the um, blue started, um, at least today. I'll be right back. I did have a video game themed wedding. We tried to keep it like subtle so it wasn't like super noticeable. Um, but it was definitely like our stag and dove was much more noticeably video game themed. Um, but our actual wedding, we tried to like be subtle. We did things like um, so my centerpieces I used, I had like a tall vase. With ours was a card game themed. We used navy as our base color, and the flowers had little monopoly pieces. Oh, that's cute! Um, so, like, my centerpieces were a tall, clear vase, which I filled with green gel beads, and we had like a single protea flower, which is this very 
uh, large, like, many-petaled blossom, and it kind of has, like, a little bit of a piranha plant look to it. Um, so those were our centerpieces. Our tables were, um, themed and numbered, like, every table was themed with a Pokemon badge instead of a number. I mean, they had numbers as well, because you've got to make it easy for the people who aren't the video game nerds. Um, well, oh, our, um, all of the bridesmaid had a flower in their hair, um, that I had had a friend, uh, make up out of silk flowers, and, um, we each had one of the different, like, mage colors from Final Fantasy, so there was a white, which was the one I wore, a red, a black, and, um, I think we did blue. Um, red, white, black, blue. Yeah, so we had, so we had roses, and then the boot, the, all the groomsmen had their boutonnieres matching color, so Hunter's Rose was white to match my white rose, and then each one of my bridesmaids had one of the other colors with their dresses. And, like, like I said, our colors were green and gold to be a nod to The Legend of Zelda. The only, like, super overtly nerdy thing that we did for the wedding uh, was we literally dressed up our, our flower girl and our, um, our, um, ring bearer as Link and Zelda, which was kind of weird because they were brother and sister, but I mean, it's okay. So we had like a Zelda made dress made up for our flower girl and a matching Link outfit made up. And, um, that was essentially the, a friend of ours, like, we were trying, we were going to buy them, pay for her, them, but she insisted on letting us have, like, she did the work, we paid for the materials, of course, but she did all the work for free on them as our wedding gift to us, because she was, uh, a really big into cosplay. Um, and then, um, our rings were actually in a little chest that when you opened it up, it made the doo 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 like whatever I I did it quite a little bit wrong but like the it actually made that noise when you opened the ring where our rings were that our ring bearer was carrying which was why he was Link he was the like the Link chest opening noise so we had quite a bit of fun with ours the reception had Monopoly money covered candle holders paper tablecloths and boxes made of playing cards filled with crayons board game pieces were in some of the jars on the tables and game boards were on the walls and we had to games to play and playing cards as favorites oh that's fun that is fun I love themed weddings that tell you a little bit about who the bride and groom really are especially when you find class like not, like, super overtly nerdy ways of doing it. That's fun. I love it. Okay. All right. And I need my reference. Actually, we're going to do this over here again. Get this out of the way. At the end of the night, we had two hours of karaoke. That's great. Um, at our stag and doe, we made a giant Angry Birds, like real life Angry Birds, because Angry Birds was still like in the hype, because this was, oh man, how many years is it now? It'll be our 12th anniversary in August. Um, so this was like during the height of Angry Birds <laughs> that we, we got married. So we like literally, we made like, a four foot sling, maybe three foot slingshot, and we got like the Angry Bird plushies and the pig plushies that we actually found, um, and we like had the, got all of those. Um, okay, and what is a uh, what is a stag and doe bachelor and bachelorette? Um, we 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 call them stag and does usually still. Um, and then, like, the bachelor and bachelorette parties are when they go off and do their own party thing. So, our, our, sorry, a stag and doe, my apologies, a stag and doe is, I don't, I assume that it's, yeah, 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 stag and doe. Like, the, 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 the ba barnyard-ish, like, the low-grade party that you throw to help you raise money with the games and the drinking and the, yeah. <laughs> so, we had Angry Birds at our stag and doe. And, um, it made a lot of money. P 
people really loved lining up to slingshot birds at pigs on wooden blocks. And then at the end of the night, because they like the crowd wanted us to, we actually auctioned off the slingshot and the birds at the end of the night. It was really fun. Wait, stop. What am I stopping? Is the concept of the stag and doe a uniquely Canadian thing? Yes, we have parties to raise money for our weddings. The U.S. is doing... It's true. Between our stag and doe and our wedding gifts, um, we pretty much broke even on our wedding. I mean, we had a pretty cheap wedding, and that doesn't always happen, but, um, yeah. We do not do that. Go into the substantial debt, yeah. I mean, a lot of people do still go into substantial debt, but we did not. <laughs> yeah, between... Uh, my mom, my dad pitched in some money, Hunter's mom pitched in some money, um, the stag and doe, and essentially the money we got from wedding gifts. We pretty much broke even on our, on our actual wedding. I mean, we didn't, but we had friends that did. Fair enough, right? Like, not everybody does. Like, we have friends who genuinely needed money, and so, like, their stag and doe, like, their wedding was so bare bones and budget. It was, like, in a community center and everything else, and so the money that they raised at their stag and doe not only paid for their wedding, but it actually helped furnish some of their life, too. And which sometimes happens if you make enough money at your stag and doe, but most of the time it just helps the pain of having to pay for a wedding some, if not a lot. <laughs> Yeah, so our stag and does are, are, are a unique thing, it sounds like, that we do, and then they'll be, and then everybody will have, like, usually have a bachelorette and a bachelor party, um, which can get just as raunchy as they do in the States, but, I mean, we were, we were pretty tame, we actually ended up in the same place at the same time at one point for our stag and does, or our bachelor and bachelorette parties, um, because we, we did end up doing them on the same night. We don't do them, like, the night before the wedding. Very few people do their bachelor and bachelorette parties the night before the wedding. It's usually, like, a week before or something like that. Because who in their right mind goes and gets themselves plastered out of their mind the night before their wedding? That's just, like, the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. So we, uh, we have our, our bachelor and bachelor We had our bachelor and bachelorette, uh, like, a week before the wedding. Um, and so we went out, I wanted to do, like, going to, like, dinner theater. I wanted to have, like, a chill night, but my, my stepsister, who was my maid of honor, would have none of that. Um, she was like, no, no, we are going to go and do shenanigans and then go to karaoke at Clifton Hill, uh, which is, like, the local tourist destination, um, but they do some good karaoke at the, at the one place there. So that's where we ended up. We ended up doing karaoke at the Beer Gardens on Clifton Hill. And my stepsister was like, okay, so we're going to meet at um, the Build-A-Bear on Clifton Hill. It's just the easiest place. It was near the close to parking spots and things like that. So I'm like, okay, um, that's where we're going to start. And then I was so mad that we're just like, I'm like, I, but I want to go to Build-A-Bear. She's like, no, no, we're just meeting them. I'm like, but I want to go to Build-A-Bear. It's my bachelorette party. You're already making me do something that wasn't what I wanted to do. I'm going to build a bear. So I went to build a bear at my bachelorette party. <laughs> my bachelor got canceled and replanned last minute by my mother-in-law at an Applebee's. Oh, no. I fully request a do-over, right? I don't blame you. I would want a do-over in those circumstances, too. I did end up having a lot of fun at my bachelorette party. I got drunk enough. I don't ever let myself get super drunk because that is not me. I've done that a couple of times in my life and that was the worst experiences I've ever had. 
Um, but for the most part, like, we went, we did karaoke. I even got up and sang, and I don't do, like, not by myself. I refuse to get up and sing by myself. Nobody wants to hear that. You guys have all heard me sing. Nobody wants to hear that. Um, <laughs> And then for our honeymoon, we didn't even get much of a honeymoon, which really sucked. We we couldn't really afford much of anything anyways, um, but um, our, we were going to go to Pele Island, where there's a local winery, and that's essentially what we were going to do. We were going to go do this winery and have some a nice time out in wine country. And it was going to be lovely. And we ended up having to do it all over, like, a long weekend. Um, because, um, if, um, we ended up having to do it all over a long weekend because my hu husband's boss at the time um, was like, no, I'm going to, um, vend at a convention. You can't have your time off. So he had been at one store and he booked the time off and then they transferred him to another store. Uh, like, and he'd like booked a week off so we could have an, a honeymoon together. Even if we weren't going away for the whole thing, we were going to have time together. Um, but he moved stores and they're like, uh, no, he can't have that weekend off because I'm going to a convention. He's like, I'm getting married. This is my honeymoon. I am taking this time off. And, like, we, we couldn't even take the whole week. He took, like, a couple of days. And, and it really sucked. Because I am a firm believer that if you have an employee... It's your responsibility to work it if they need the time off. They take priority over you. But because she was vending at a com at a convention, she she refused to budge. And she had had the time booked off first for her store, and so we got screwed. He, Hunter, almost didn't get our, his own wedding off. <laughs> we went to Puerto Vallarta, but Hubs had medical condition that really impacted our time there, and we're redoing that for sure. Yeah, it sounds like you are definitely in need of, like, a whole vow renewal vacation. The green ones are turning out really nice. I like them a lot. My bachelor, oh, so I read that part. Um, we, yeah, okay. I read all those. Good stuff. I don't want or need to do a vow renewal, but all the extra fluff that just fell flat, I want to redo. Fair enough. He's kind of like, okay, we're going to do the vow renewal just so I can get to all the other stuff. <laughs> Nope, not that lucky on the drops today. You had one really good one. I'm not surprised <laughs> that you're not getting any more after that. <coughs> All right, Nightbot. Well, if you're going to drop, I might as well get one in, too. I have a drop button and it's very helpful because I have been known to use it in other chats as well. <laughs> I mean, we could renew, vow renew in Mexico if we need a reason, right? Absolutely. If you if you want to get the friends together for the shenanigans for the party, then like if you want to do like the redo the bachelorette stuff and that kind of stuff as part of the whole thing and like get people along for destination, it's got to be a vow renewal. So then you get the, everybody involved. Is 
All right. So I think do one more for the greens. I really like the way the greens have turned out. Oh my god, Bach party at all-inclusive resort. Bachelor party at an all-inclusive resort. Someone's getting their stomach pumped. Yep. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I really need a vacation. I'm hoping to come up with some way that Hunter and I can take even just a long weekend away from life. But that is... Uh, oh no, I got red in that one. I guess I won't use that. Um... But that is all but impossible between a child and running a store. <laughs> I just want to get away with just him and I and have some fun and relaxation somewhere. But, um, yeah. I somehow find it very interesting that there are not a lot of people in our group of friends that are heavy drinkers. Like, there's- I've got friends that can drink heavily. No heavy sigh. Always heavy sigh in my life. Um. <laughs> yeah, heavy sigh that I'm definitely not getting that vacation. Um. Like, we've got friends that can drink. I have- some great video footage of um, Troop, who is was our best man, is my husband's best friend, is, an, is our employee at our store. Incredibly drunk. <laughs> but it's not something any of us do regularly. I've never actually understood people who go out and get, like, drunk on a regular basis. It's never made sense to me at all. I don't like the feeling of loss of control that you get with being drunk, so the people getting drunk regularly, like, just flabbergasts me. I do not understand. <laughs> okay, so, we're making good time. Now we're going to move on to the blue. I will probably finish these offline on my own, I'm not going to lie, because I'm really enjoying these and I think they're going to be really cute. Um... So I'm hoping if I have some time this weekend that I can finish these up on my own. But let's start, we'll start with blending up the blue. I probably won't get much farther than doing that. I'm not a heavy drinker either, and I have one friend who regularly is a heavy drinker and another that is very good at feeding me alcohol. Fair enough, right? Fair enough. Um, that should be enough, right? Um, what blue do I want to use? Um, most of my blues are more of a tealy aqua blue, so I think this is probably the one that I'm going with. see the purple. Okay, I guess I can do the purple one. Let's do the purple one. Um, there we go. There's my purple ink. Got some bread stuck in here, which isn't really going to be a big problem. Now the question is, is I hadn't really decided what color I wanted to accent the purple with. But I guess for now I'm probably only going to get through actually um, dyeing the um, clay, so it's probably not that big of a deal. Oh my gosh, what are we doing? 
Uh, did the taco... No, they did not get into the shop yet. I did not have time to update the shop because I greatly underestimate how long it takes me to edit cities. <laughs> so no, I am sorry. They were not yet in the shop. I am bad business person. I am sorry. No, no, they did not. I have, I think, four pairs that I will be able to put up into the shop. I just uh, did not have time because I grossly underestimated how long it would take me to edit an Octo City. Besides, if they sold out, that just means we'd end up making more on stream. Because if something sold out that quickly... Uh, I would definitely want to make more of it. <laughs> that is good business. The nice thing is, is that the purple is a really vibrant um, pigment. Have to run an errand, so I'm heading out. We'll leave the tab up and carry it away along with the raid. Oh, you're so sweet. Have a great rest of your day and weekend. See you all next week. Thank you, Agent, for your sweetness, as always. And we'll see you next week on Around the Twitchiverse. Bye, friend. Take care. Probably the best thing to do is to put in something like a really like lavender y color. Like, I feel like that that is the best use of um, of contrast for the purples. Why are you not going back into place? Oh. And then I think that the gold will go really nice with that contrast. I'm going to do much like I did with the green where I put it all together and then cut it up again because I feel like I got a better division of the small bits, like a, a, a better distribution of them when I did it that way, so... I am going to stick around for a few minutes past one, so there is going to be an ad roll running. In just about a minute, or just a couple of seconds, so please be aware of that. Um, not much I can do, considering I'm going to be here a few minutes late, and, and it's going to have to run at some point. <laughs>
<laughs> Hello, Gorb. Now let's add some gold. To get my inks back out of the way. Because I'm gonna need this space in a minute. Definitely need to invest in some new metallic paints, though. bits are sticking to my gloves again. <laughs> mostly for now. Alright. Alright, let's make a couple of our last few rainbows for, for the day out of the purple and gold. Yes, Locke's been around. He was here earlier today. Let's 
So the purple ones are coming out really gold, which is okay. I'm here for it. So in this one, instead of trying hard to get pieces that are like of the solid color, I'm trying hard to get pieces that have less gold on them <laughs> to balance it out. one a lot because you can see a lot of the gold and a lot of the solid. Yeah, it looks like Locke's pretty deep in the lurk for right now, but that's okay. That is okay. We are almost done anyhow. <sighs> Listen to me sounding like lurking isn't okay. Lurking is totally okay. <laughs> we're done doing these today we're gonna sign off for the day Alright, one more, and then we're going to call it quits for the day, and then I will do the blue ones on my own on the weekend, hopefully. If not, we'll be working on them next week. <laughs> As of right now, we're just going to come back in on Monday. We're going to work on finishing painting Evie. We mostly just need to do some, like, accent painting, and I think if we get through that, we might actually pick up Cacturina and do a little pa painting on her, because she still needs to be finished, too. Um, and then hopefully after we do that, we'll get, we'll actually get started on the, um, Omu sculpt that I've been planning for so long. And then, uh, in terms of the clay work we're doing next week, I'm not totally sure yet what other projects I'm going to have. 
I'll just see what I feel like doing. <laughs> That's pretty much where I'm at these days. I like those. Okay, so let's take these, put it out of the way. I think it was gonna look real cute. All right, and I am totally covered in gold paint. All right, I am not gonna worry about a raid today. I'm gonna, I would just have to raid and run. Um, because I have, I'm running a little late and I still have stuff to do before I go to my afternoon shift and there's only three of us, so I'm not going to worry about it. So I'm just going to sign off, um, in just a minute. I will see you guys all again next week. Thank you for being here, friends. Thank you for hanging out with me and always being the sweet beans that you are. And, um, yeah, we're gonna, we're just going to call it for the day. And we'll see you guys all again real soon. Thank you so much for being here and always being amazing. So thank you, friends. Take care. And I'm going to see you guys all again next week and around the Twitchiverse, of course. Sore, tired, and sore. Well, I'm glad. Oh, thank you. I'm glad Locke came in just uh, just in time to say goodbye and uh, catch up with Empress. And yeah, we'll see you guys all again. I love you too, Locke. And we'll see you guys all again next week. Take care, friends. We'll see you soon. Feel better, luck. Bye bye, friends. Bye bye. Fuck off, luck. Fuck off. And on that note.